Brazil is likely home to well over 80,000 jaguars, in addition to some of the highest densities of melanistic jaguars, according to the results of two fascinating studies. Estimating population size is crucial for the conservation of many animals, but can be notoriously difficult, especially for elusive species like the jaguar. Over the last few decades, researchers have developed a powerful tool to make this process more accurate. Species distribution modeling combines species data, such as camera trap studies or surveys, with environmental data, such as temperature or land cover, to model the relationship between the two in order to predict, for example, potential population density or potential distribution. The first study will explore expanded upon existing methods to model both potential jaguar density and the probability of jaguar occurrence in order to produce population estimates across all countries within the jaguar's range. To start, the researchers defined their study area as the entire historical range with a 200 km buffer around the current range if applicable. Thanks to the markings on their coats making each jaguar individually identifiable, this species is an excellent candidate for a method known as capture-recapture, which in this case doesn't actually require capturing the jaguars. Camera traps can capture photos of jaguars and then recapture them when the same individuals are identified again. This study used camera trap data from other studies, but noted that not all camera trap data is equal. The programs used in these studies were classed either as using spatial or non-spatial methods, which differ in how they calculate densities, with non-spatial methods often overestimating density figures. To account for this, the researchers took the studies that used both methods and calculated how much non-spatial methods were overestimating in order to rescale the studies that only used non-spatial methods. In total, the density estimates used in the study spanned 80 unique locations across North and South America. The researchers then identified 17 factors that they thought might affect jaguar density, which included both environmental and human factors. The three human factors were human population density, which relates to things like the number of hunters and the frequency of killing large carnivores or their prey, human footprint index, which shows how much humans have altered the landscape, and the amount of land that was classed as a protected area. Environmental factors included precipitation, which is usually related to ecological productivity in the tropics, the amount of forest canopy and groundwater, both of which jaguars are huge fans of, and both gross and net primary production, which relates to the productivity of an ecosystem, effectively more food for the herbivores, more prey for the jaguar. All of this data was then used together to produce density models using complicated math that we'll gloss over in this video. In addition to density, the researchers also modeled jaguar distribution in a similar fashion. The occurrence data used for these models is known as presence-absence data and is binary. One represents the presence of jaguar and zero represents the absence of jaguar. For example, when a camera trap was set up, but no jaguars were recorded. In this study, camera trap data came from four sources, two of which are particularly interesting. The first being interviews conducted in Venezuela with cattle ranchers and hunters, which explains this large group of data points on the study area map. And the second was a set of randomly generated absence points outside of the current range, in order to balance the number of presence and absence points used for the model. They used the same environmental data used for the density models and then used equally complicated mathematics, which we'll gloss over once again. The final step in their methodology was estimating jaguar population numbers. At this point, the researchers point out an interesting limitation in one of their models. They state that because researchers conducting camera trap studies tend to select less disturbed study areas where they expect to find jaguars and thus avoid areas with high human impact, they could not extract population numbers directly from the jaguar density model. This was not the case, however, with the presence-absence data, which did include occurrence points where jaguars have been wiped out due to human activity. Therefore, to estimate the total jaguar population size, a combination of both models was used, in addition, quite remarkably, to an even larger number of complicated maths equations. 
The top model indicated that jaguars have the potential to reach the highest population densities in the most ecologically productive, humid areas, and the lowest densities in dry areas or at high altitudes. In terms of occurrence, the top model predicted the highest probabilities of jaguar occurrence in the Amazon basin and along the eastern coast of Central America, and the lowest probabilities of occurrence in dry areas, in mountainous regions at high altitudes, in areas of dense human population, and at the northern and southernmost extremes of the historical jaguar range. When combined and restricted to the current jaguar range, this is likely where most of the world's jaguars occur. In terms of total numbers, the researchers estimated within a reasonable degree of error that the total number of jaguars is 173,151. They did mention that this estimate may be considered high by other researchers, which they attributed to the high probabilities of jaguar occurrence and moderate to high densities in the Amazon. In terms of individual countries, the highest number of jaguars by far are likely found in Brazil at 87,000, followed by Peru with 22,000, which experiences the highest mean density in its portion of the Amazon. The countries of Central America generally exhibit lower population estimates, with the highest numbers found in Mexico at 4,300. Central America also exhibited a smaller number of melanistic records from a second study that used similar methods. Melanism is reasonably common for wildcats, having been documented in 13 species. According to several sources, by definition the term black panther can refer to the melanistic form of any of the big five cats, but in practice is used to refer either to melanistic jaguars or melanistic leopards. The authors of this study, which includes both jaguars and leopards, highlight several hypotheses stating that melanism can provide an advantage in certain ecological conditions, especially in wetter areas with dense vegetation. With this in mind, they wanted to test whether black panthers occur randomly across all environments, or whether melanism in jaguars and leopards is more common in certain areas. Using a similar approach to the last study, occurrence data was collected from five different sources, including camera traps, ecological studies, and online databases. Also shown in these maps are terrestrial biomes, which were also used in the analysis. For the environmental data needed for the model, 35 variables were used, which can be grouped into four categories, covering temperature, precipitation, solar radiation, and moisture, in addition to altitude and land surface cover. All of this information helps in understanding the environmental factors that might influence where melanism occurs. At this point, the paper mentions an interesting concept known as model overfitting, which is creating a model that matches or memorizes the training set so closely that the model fails to make correct predictions. In the case of this study, environmental variables that are too similar can cause model overfitting. To compare variables, the researchers used Pearson's correlation coefficient, which is actually a lot more simple than it looks. When comparing two variables, this formula produces a number between 1 and minus 1. 1 means a perfect positive correlation. As one variable increases, the other increases as well. Minus 1 means a perfect negative correlation. As one variable increases, the other decreases. Zero means no correlation between the two variables. The researchers calculated this statistic for every pair of environmental variables and used a cutoff of 0.7 to determine when two variables were too similar and likely to cause overfitting. The results for the leopard are particularly interesting thanks to its large range and large number of subspecies. Of the 623 occurrence records for leopards, 10.75% of these were from melanistic individuals, and melanism occurred in five of the nine subspecies, most often in Southeast Asia. Melanism was most common in tropical and subtropical moist forests, with 88% of the melanistic occurrence records, and the highest percentage of melanistic individuals at 30%, suggesting that the occurrence of melanistic leopards is not randomly distributed. This map shows the potential distribution of non-melanistic leopards, 
and this map shows the potential distribution of melanistic leopards, with predictors relating to moisture showing the strongest correlation. Of the 980 jaguar occurrence records, a similar 9.8% of the individuals were melanistic, with most of the records for melanistic individuals occurring in South America. Grassland ecoregions like the Pantanal and Los Llanos showed a complete lack of melanism, whereas forest ecoregions such as the Alto Paraná Atlantic Forest showed high frequencies. In similar fashion to leopards, this suggests that the occurrence of melanistic jaguars is also not random. This map shows the potential distribution of non-melanistic jaguars. This map shows the potential distribution of melanistic jaguars, with predictors relating to temperature showing the strongest correlation. And this map shows the total number of brown bear attacks in Europe, a study you can learn about in this short video. Thank you so much for watching.